Right. Welcome to the Healthy Hustling Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest. Uh, this episode, I think it was only a matter of time. I am interviewing the woman, the myth, the legend, the wife, Jessica Broadworth. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about this. We're going to bring in a different perspective, talk about Jess and some of her injuries she's been dealing with. So, um, yeah. And as many of you, uh, like I probably will have like 20, 30, maybe 50 views, just, well, I don't know. Hopefully we have more share this with your friends. We're going to have more yeah. views. Jess got ready for you. So if you're watching on YouTube, Jess workout and Eric told me, Hey, you're going on my podcast tonight. So I don't know what he's going to ask me. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but I'm here. <laughs> so she's here. She's done way more real TV segments than I've ever done. So I'm sure she's going to kill it, but thank you for coming on. Thank hon. you for having me. <laughs> um, yeah. So Jess was a dancer. And since we've been talking about injuries, I figured we'd talk about her injury, which probably is really uh, a part of what led us to meet. So you injured your hamstring back in high school. Um, right. And tell us about that. It doesn't seem like a big deal for a lot of people if they're thinking like, Oh, you know, a hamstring issue, but it can definitely be a big issue. Tell us about your hamstring injury. Sure. So it was about 10 years ago now. That's crazy. Um, so like Eric said, I was a dancer and it was actually the start of our season going into my senior year of high school. Um, so I had auditions scheduled all around the country because I did want to pursue dance in college as a career, but it was kind of the first day of our season and we had a guest choreographer come in and um, I typically stretch a lot before a dance workout. I know depending on your workouts and you know, the prep time and kind of stretching and warming up can be different, but we kind of had some specific stretches that we did before, but I just didn't stretch enough this one time. And um, we were just learning a new routine for our senior showcase and it was very repetitive and we were kind of going it over and over, you know, throughout the hour that we had and, um, I think I get delayed onset muscle soreness. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's some doms. <laughs> yeah, so I was feeling okay after a little tight, but then I went to class the next day and I was doing an extension and I felt a pull and it did not feel, did not feel right, did not feel good. And so I stopped immediately, went to ice and had trouble walking um, that day and the next day. And I knew something was seriously wrong. Um, it wasn't just something that I could overcome and kind of get back to it. It was a couple days of pain. And then I knew that, yeah, something, something bad had happened and I did get injured and um, yeah, kind of put things into perspective at the time. So what was, were you able to rehab it? What was rehab like? For those of you who don't know, Jess's father is also a physical therapist, so <laughs> um, I'm sure she got plenty of tips and pointers, but did your dad do your rehab? Did you go somewhere else? Mm -hmm. I'm sure for those of you with kids or if you are younger, ha wanting to listen to your dad tell you what to do to rehab, probably just you butt heads with your parents sometimes. I know my parents would tell me to do something. And, you know, it's like, you know, best at the time, how did, how did all that go and play out? Yeah. So my dad is a physical therapist. I like grew up at his clinic. So it's very ironic that <laughs> I met a physical therapist and married him. Um, but my dad did help me with recovery and getting through the injury for my senior year. So I would say one thing, um, you know, that I didn't do correctly was I didn't have enough time to rest. And that's because I had auditions scheduled across the country and I continued to dance through it and through my senior year. So I, you know, probably should have taken that time to recover, but just, you know, when you're kind of in that moment and that's your future and that's what you're working towards, I, I couldn't just stop. I, you know, I couldn't just not dance. So he definitely, he worked on me almost 
every single day through rehab, um, you know, soft tissue exercises, ice, lots of different things, tools, the scraper things that he used on me um, to get it better to where I could perform an audition throughout the next couple months. Um, and we did have also a massage. One of our dance teachers, she was a um, masseuse and she helped too before shows and before weekend performances, she did work on me as well. So I did have both of them to get me through temporarily, but it was not a long-term fix. So, yeah. So, so what happened then after you, you go through your whole senior year, what happens after that when you get to the end of your senior year? Cause you're hoping to be go into dance in college, right. And be a professional dancer. So, mm -hmm. um, take us through what's going on in 18 year old Jess's head. Sure. So like I said, I continued to dance on the injury. Um, and so that just prolonged the recovery time. And it got to a point where, you know, I kind of reflected after one of the auditions I had, and I was like, if I'm injured at 18 years old, how can I make this a profession? So it was, a, you know, a crazy reality that I kind of came to. Um, honestly, a blessing in disguise. But, you know, at the time, that was all I kind of worked towards and wanted to pursue. And it was devastating. It was really hard. And I tried to push past the injury, but just, you know, knowing I was injured at a young age and I needed my body to be healthy and fit going into my, you know, if I were to pursue dance in college, I needed, I couldn't be injured. So it really put things in perspective. And I realized that, you know, I will always have dance in my heart and I could have it as a hobby, but I wasn't going to pursue it and make a career out of it. So that was a tough choice, but it was, you know, I think it was the right choice. Um, yeah. So what would you, would you say that the psychological impact was almost harder than the physical impact? Because as you've heard me talk to a bunch of people, um, when it comes to any injury, <clears throat> especially if it involves what you do for a living or e even as like a very strong hobby, if, if it, it's part of your identity or it affects your identity, mm -hmm. that can be one of the hardest things to deal with. Um, you know, you look at, I, I, I've worked with dancers in the past, but also working with just any athlete. And if they have a career ending injury, that can be so difficult. And sometimes it can lead to anxiety and depression. And it's trying to figure out where do you go from here? How did that impact you? Yes, I would say it definitely did. Um, you know, at first you didn't realize it, but because I was so focused on rehabbing and getting better and back into dance, but I just kept, you know, I kept getting more injured the more I continued to dance on an injury. And so, you know, when it got to that point, it was a really tough decision to make. And it definitely, you know, I was, I was lost after that. I didn't know what I wanted to do when you work so hard for something. Um, but when your body's telling you that, you know, you, you should take a break and this, you know, isn't the path that you're supposed to go down. Um, it did open myself up to new opportunities and the experiences that I had in college. Um, I applied to a lot of fine arts schools. So when it was time to make the decision, it was, you know, going into, um, was it second semesters, senior years? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. So I had to choose a school that had other majors besides dance and yeah, I was lost. I mean, you could talk to my parents and my mom, me trying to figure out what to do. But um, like I said, it was a blessing in disguise and just had to change my mindset. And I learned, you know, at a young age, like life doesn't always go as planned. And there is a reason for that. And it just brought me to other opportunities. Yeah. So and that's something that I always try to focus on and hit on with anyone that I'm working with and rehabbing through an injury and they're going through something that might be, you know, what they perceive as life altering is 
what opportunities does this open up? Because I'm a big believer, as you know, that with any struggle, um, there's always an opportunity and you know, what, how can we make this a positive? What Mm -hmm. opportunities can we find in this hardship and in this difficulty to, you know, sometimes not only affect our own lives, but affect other lives and everything like that. Um, yeah. Was there anything else that you really wanted to, to hit on? Um, and so are you dancing? I guess let, let the people know, <laughs> <laughs> let the audience know all the viewers out there. Are you dancing right now? Um, have you gotten back into dance at all? What is it that you're doing? Sure. So I did take a little break, um, after that, after I realized that, you know, I wasn't going to pursue dance in college, but I did go to a a college where I was able to minor in dance. So I did, um, take a few dance classes each semester, which was great. Um, as I studied for my other classes, my major, and I did go to physical therapy in college. So, um, you know, my dad was great helping me out, but I wasn't there with him. I was out of state. So I needed to find a new physical therapist. And I really wanted to take care of the injury because even when I started to do different workout classes, um, you know, it would flare up and it was never fully healed because like I said, I continued to push and dance on it and it just made it worse. And then I just kind of let it be and just let it go. And then I think it was about a year later where I was like, okay, I want to fix this. I want to be able to minor in dance and, you know, have that and um, be able to work out without pain and, you know, get it fixed. So I did go to physical therapist, um, a different one by school and took it seriously. <laughs> and I was able to, you know, complete a dance minor and take some classes. Um, and so now I like to do group fitness classes. Um, I'm not dancing anymore, but I did take a couple Grand Rapids adult ballet classes over the past few years, um, just definitely out of dance shape, <laughs> but it was fun to, to go and take a few classes, but I do like doing group fitness classes and that's, um, yeah, any kind of a, an instructor telling me what to do. Cause that's kind of how, you know, I grew up and that was my fitness activity through dance. So I've found a new gym and yeah, I really enjoy it. So <laughs> having worked with multiple physical therapists, what would you, what's been your experience having had multiple, if that makes sense. So, you know, I work with people who, you know, they went and saw, they've seen one before. Um, are they all the same? I I guess is that's one question. Has your experience been positive? Has it been negative? Yeah. So nope, they're not the same. And I was excited to find a clinic in Kalamazoo um, where I went to school that one of the physical therapists, so I kind of saw two there. um, She worked specifically with dancers. So I loved hearing that because she could understand like my body and my movement and what was wrong, get to the core and root of the inner the injury. Um, and then I did have another physical therapist there kind of switched off who is a bit tougher on me, um, for some exercises. So it's, you know, it's different depending on where you go. Um, I was more motivated, I think as an adult versus, you know, kind of more of a a teenager. Um, sorry, the dog (laughs) is barking behind us, but yeah, so it's, you know, if you're not finding success with one, um, you can always get a second opinion somewhere else and really find someone that understands your sport and what you're into and who can relate to you. And I was happy, you know, to find that where I was at in college. Yeah. So I, and I think you hit the nail on the head. I think it's important to find someone that you can connect with, especially with something like physical therapy, where sometimes if you end up going multiple times, sometimes multiple times a week, uh, in, if you're dealing with something that's going to take weeks or months of rehab, sometimes years, then you want someone who speaks your language and knows what your goals are and where you're coming from. Uh, so with dance, do they know what releve means? I got that right. And I, Oh, (laughs) um, anyway, do they know what a releve is or in CrossFit, you know, do they know what a snatch is? Do they know what a clean and jerk is? 
Um, do they know the rules? Do they know what your body has to go through, especially that with that sport or that activity? Um, and how then can they tailor that your rehab to meet those requirements and those goals? Yeah. I think that's awesome. Um, and then a little fun fact with the place you went to in Kalamazoo, I did a clinical rotation there. I found out later on after we met, we did not meet there. Um, but we met later on and yeah, fun story. But anyways, uh, was there anything else you wanted to add about dancing and your injury? Um, so I, think I think we wrapped it up. Yeah. I think we did it pretty well. Um, so another little bonus question <laughs> for um, those of you who maybe you're not injured, but maybe you have a family member or friend that's injured in, in going through things. What is it like dealing with them? So I guess what's it like dealing with me? You've had to <laughs> cart me around, by the way. I can't drive for like six weeks. So Jess is forced to drive me around everywhere. I used to do the driving and now I sit in the passenger seat and do backseat driving, which is great. I enjoy it because she used to backseat drive. She got all the fun there. And now I get to backseat drive. But what's it like dealing with um, with me? <laughs> with you? That's a loaded question. Um, let's break it down. So <laughs> honestly, you're doing a lot better than I thought you would. I thought you would be like helpless for six weeks, <laughs> not moving like in on bed rest. Um, but you are very motivated to get back um, and recover from this injury as quickly and, you know, following protocol. And um, you're definitely motivated and determined. I know you want to get back to working out and your job and your business, you know, relies on, um, you know, working with your hands. So you are doing a lot better than I thought. <laughs> you are very <laughs> strong. And, you know, I mean, it's, I've had to adjust some things. I wouldn't say it's an inconvenience. You know, I'm here to, that's, that's a lie. <laughs> no, that's a lie. No, 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 I'm here to take care of you. Um, but you've, you've made it a lot easier than I thought it would be so far. Yeah. She thought it, it's, it has been funny because, um, as a physical therapist and dealing with your own injury, I am blessed and fortunate that I know a lot of what is needed to recover. But at the same time, I also need sometimes that, that check there of like, Hey, should you really be doing that? And so Jess has <laughs> been, uh, very certain. She's like, you are going to rest. And I'm like, I am resting. So do, do I rest enough? No, <laughs> I, you know, you were back working like two days after surgery. No, a day. no, I got surgery on a Wednesday. I was back <laughs> your laptop on Thursday. You were doing work. On I Thursday. did open my laptop on Thursday. I opened it for like to answer to me emails. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so no, thank you for, for dealing with me. Cause it can't be easy, but one thing that I guess I would stress to um, others out there that are dealing with an injury, or if you have someone in your life that's dealing with an injury, having a strong support system is extremely important. Um, and whether it's something, you know, sometimes what you might perceive as minor, they might not perceive as minor, but I see it all the time. The people who have a good support system have so much better outcomes. And I definitely wouldn't, um, have had, I guess the kind of success. I, I'm only like three weeks in right now. So it hasn't been a complete success. It's been successful so far. I've got a long way to go. I'm only three weeks in, but it wouldn't have been off to such a good start without such a strong support system. Um, so thanks. I think it, your mindset and the motivation too. I mean, you're determined to get back, you know, as quickly as possible, hopefully as safely as possible too, but um, you're motivated and you have to find something, you know, that motivates you to keep you going. Cause it's, 
it's not easy. We were supposed to go to Alaska. <laughs> our first anniversary trip got canceled and then this is our second one and it got postponed. Um, and it's, you know, summertime and we had summer plans for hiking and swimming and enjoying Michigan summers. Um, so I know that it's definitely a bummer for you, but you're staying motivated to, you know, get through this and get back to work and working out. And that was, so for, I guess for those of you who don't know, when, when my injury happened, when I, when I tore my pec, I had the, my first two, I had a couple first few thoughts, but one of the first thoughts I have right after, you know, oh shit, I just tore my pec and I'm going to need surgery. Cause I knew that immediately my next thought was, we're supposed to leave for Alaska in a week. And I have to tell just that we are not leaving for Alaska. Like there, they're just, there's nothing I can do about that. Like we're not leaving for Alaska. And so, um, she was super supportive and just, I think <laughs> cried to herself more so than to me, but, um, yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy for anyone when you got to, care for someone or there are difficulties. I think both people can sometimes get frustrated, but having that strong support system is, is so important. Um, and just being there for each other for sure. Cool. Um, yeah, let's see here. I posted on Facebook. We're going to see if anyone had any questions for you. Is this live? No, we're not live right now. <laughs> But I did have people, <laughs> I put put out, what questions do you have for? Uh, Shay Patrick says, number of Stanley Cup cups Chicago has compared to the Detroit Red Wings. So for those That's of you who don't know, this podcast, this, po uh, this podcast can be about anything. I'm the host. So um, for those of you who don't know, Jessica is a Chicago Blackhawks fan, uh, unfortunately for her. And how many how many cups do you guys have? It's less than the wings. Okay. That's unfortunate. How have the wings been doing recently? We're rebuilding. Mm -hmm. We're rebuilding. Mm -hmm. Coming off of, you know, 25 straight post seasons. Uh, your cousin, Mark, how much Chicago food is better than anywhere in Michigan? Oh, all of it. All of it. Are you serious? Are you serious? Yeah. Yes. First off. We Go to Chicago for the pizza. I have all my. You have really good pizza. Go I do like your yeah. pizza, aka also known as your casserole. I'll call it a pizza. I do enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But the Thai food is better there. I would, that's you debatable. Would say the hot dogs are better. Hot dogs are better in Detroit. Michigan. Detroit Coney, Flint Coney, much better. The beef sandwiches are better in Chicago. Yeah, Italian beef. Okay. The I mean. I do like the restaurants around here, the local ones, but the overall food and. And what? <laughs> and what? <laughs> what, what? No, what else? I was going to say quality and chefs like they're, you know, Chicago is a bigger city. So you're typically going to have some maybe a little higher quality, but there are fantastic restaurants and chefs in Grand Rapids. I won't downplay that, but the food, you know, Chicago is known as one of the foodie cities at least i think so so chicago food all the way i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna disagree no. slightly I, I like food in chicago i enjoy it but i've got so what about tara out here in grand rapids show it to yeah, tara like great said, restaurant <laughs> rockwell's republic um i thought that was your favorite restaurant apparently not Yes, I told sticky I, chicken. Like I said, there are great restaurants in Grand Rapids, but I mean, Chicago has a larger food scene, so you have more options and more. So, favorite Chicago food? Well, you know, I love Chicago style pizza. Okay, from where? Giordano's. Uh, I'll agree with that. We we can definitely agree on um, on that part. Next question from your mom. Uh, Linda Adamowski, how is Eric Broadworth feeling this week? Is he listening to his physical therapist following her rehab plan? Um, I'm feeling great. Uh, I am following the rehab plan, the protocol, and 
I know that you think that I'm not getting enough enough rest, but I am. I got a great workout in today. Felt great. I did it all one-handed. This thing was in a sling. Um, what, do you have anything to add? No. That's These question. questions are supposed to be for you. Yeah, that question was 100% directed at you, so I will let you answer that. All right. Well, one last question is this is called the Healthy Hustling Podcast. What does healthy hustling mean for you? Sure. So I think, I mean, healthy hustling means something different to everyone, but to me, it's finding something that motivates you, that you enjoy um, to, you know, stay physically active and it helps with your mental, emotional, and physical health. Um, I always say to myself, you know, I never regret the workouts that I go to. I always regret the workouts that I don't go to. So sometimes when it's, it's tough to, to, you know, get your workout in, but I just kind of have that in the back of my mind. I like to work out in the evenings, which Eric likes to work out in the morning. So he doesn't, he wants to get his workout done, but I like that stress reliever after work, you know, after I've accomplished my tasks and I'm done with my job, um, going to the gym to just kind of sweat it out and, um, I always feel better after a workout. So yeah. Awesome. This is really good. So thank you so much for coming on, even though I know I kind of had to drag you on here and, uh, and talk, but I think this is really good. Uh, I think a lot of people will get something out of this that are dealing with injuries themselves and, or maybe have had like a life altering injury. Um, next episode, we are going to have Dr. Eddie O'Connor. So for those of you, uh, kind of going back tracking a little bit, we talked about the psychology. Um, he's, uh, you know, we're going to be talking all about that, all about the psychology of pain and injury, and it's going to be awesome. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, but yeah, I think this was really helpful coming from an athlete's point of view, a wife's point of view, um, a caregiver, all that fun stuff. So thanks so much, uh, hun, love you. And, uh, we, yeah, we will see you guys on the next episode. If you have any questions, comments, put them in the comments below. You can stream this and share it. We are on Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, um, Spotify, all the major podcast stations, as well as YouTube, be sure to subscribe to this station or our YouTube channel and catch all the updates so much. Thanks so much for listening and we'll, uh, see you next time.